What's up guys, I'm back with another Logical Redstone video. Today we're going to be talking about square root. So today I'm going to go over the algorithm on paper, and then we're going to build the sequential square root extractor. This algorithm is called the long division method. Yes, I'm still talking about square roots, but it's so similar to long division that it's called the long division method. The main difference with this method is that instead of trying to subtract the divisor from the inside, we're going to try to subtract perfect squares from the inside. A perfect square is just a number that you can arrange into a square. For example, 9 is a perfect square because you can arrange all 9 items like this, which makes a perfect square. Each side is 3 long, which means that 9 is the square of 3. 4 is a perfect square as well because you can arrange 4 items like this, with each side being 2 long, so 4 is the square of 2. But something like 5 would not be a perfect square because no matter how you arrange these, you can't make a square out of it. But how does subtracting perfect squares from the number help us get the square root? Well, let me give you an example. Let's say we were trying to estimate the square root of 18. The largest perfect square that you can subtract from 18 is 16, which is 4 times 4. And by doing that, that actually gets us a little bit closer to the square root of 18, because now we know it has to be at least 4. And that makes sense. If the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 18 is larger than that, then the square root of 18 has to be at least 4. So at a high level, this algorithm is going to continue to subtract the greatest square number it can from that number because it makes estimating the square root pretty easy. There's a few other tricks that this algorithm takes advantage of as well, but I'm not going to cover all of it exactly in this video because I would rather give you just a strong intuitive sense for why it works than confuse you with small implementation details. But anyways, that's enough talking about it. Let's actually start taking some square roots using the long division method on paper. Before we start subtracting, let's mark out how big our answer is going to be. Here we're taking the square root of a 4-bit number, which means that our answer is going to be a 2-bit number, or half as many bits. So I'm just going to put some placeholders for the answer bits here and here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in a separator between each pair of bits in our number. So we have a pair right here, 0 and 1, draw a separator, and then we have another pair here, 1, 0. The reason I'm doing that is because when you separate a binary number into pairs, the right bit of each pair is naturally a perfect square. What I mean by that is this bit right here, which is the right bit of this pair, is a 1. A 1 is a perfect square. Over here, the right bit of this pair is the 4 bit and a 4 is also a perfect square, but a 2 is not a perfect square, and an 8 is not a perfect square either. It's always the right bit of the pairs. Alright, so the first thing we do is we try to subtract a 1 from the leftmost pair. If we can, we write a 1 up here. If we can't, we write a 0 up here. 2 minus 1 is 1, which means we could subtract, so we subtracted, and we wrote a 1 up here because we successfully subtracted. Then you bring the next pair down. Once we bring down this pair, we get a 5 in blue, and now we need to subtract 1 again. Except, we can't just subtract 1. In order to subtract another square, we also have to subtract everything that was successfully subtracted before as well. Which means that since we subtracted this 4 earlier, we need to append it onto here. So that now, we're not just subtracting by 1, we're subtracting by 5, which is 1 plus all the other things we subtracted previously. 5 minus 5 is 0, and since we could subtract, we write a 1 right here. And with that, we did our first square root. The square root of 1, 0, 0, 1 is 1, 1. In other words, the square root of 9 is 3. Alright, let's do another example. This time, let's take the square root of 25. 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. First, we're going to put our answer placeholders on the top, and then separate it into pairs. Okay, first we look to see if we can subtract a 1 from our leftmost pair, which is a 1 this time. And we can, so 1 minus 1 is 0, and we write a 1 up here because we could subtract. Then we bring our next pair down, and now we try to subtract 1 from here, with our answer so far appended onto the end. So don't forget to put the 1 right here, because that's our answer so far. 2 minus 5 is negative 3, which means we cannot subtract. So just repeat this blue number and put a 0 because we could not subtract. Then bring down your next pair. And before you subtract 1, you have to append the answer so far. This time our answer so far is 1, 0. So we just put 1, 0 right here. 9 minus 9 is 0, so we could subtract and we write a 1 right here. And there we go, the square root of 25 is 5, 1, 0, 1. And the other cool thing is, just like division, the number you're left with at the end, in blue, is the remainder. So, square root of 25 is 5, remainder, 0. One last example, and I'm gonna go through it kinda quick. Let's take the square root of 36. Subtract 1 from the leftmost pair. We could subtract, so we put a 1 right here, and we have 1 left over after doing 2 minus 1. Bring down the next pair. Try to subtract 1, but make sure to add on the answer so far, which is just a 1, and we get 5 minus 5. 
5 minus 5 is 0. We could subtract, so put a 1 right here and bring down your next pair. 0 minus 1 is negative 1, which means we cannot subtract. So just repeat the blue number and write a 0 up here because we could not subtract. And that's it. The square root of 36 is 110, which is 6. All right, let's make a square root extractor. We're actually gonna start with the exact same conditional subtractor for my division video. So if you go to that video during the building a conditional subtractor section, that's where I build this guy right here. Once you have your conditional subtractor, you're gonna go to the one, two, three, third orange line down and build out like this until you get to here and put redstone on top of it. Take that line and connect it to the front with this blue guy here put one more dust, a repeater, and then dust on the rest of it. Once you have that, you need to stack it five times down, and it should look something like this. Every output except for the top two are being shifted up, and every input except for the bottom two are being fed into. Then I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna break all of these, punch out this bottom one, and then change these to red wool. Put redstone on top of all of these. Then at the top, we're gonna put a block, a four tick repeater, a block, a torch, another block, a four tick repeater going this way, and another torch. Then select here and here and stack it five down. Go to the bottom, punch out this block, this torch, and replace this with a target block. Eventually this part right here is going to hold our answer in it, so we need a way to save it at the correct time. To do that, let's put a repeater coming out of this block, a lamp on the end of it, a repeater going into the side to lock it, and then you can stack this formation five down. Then let's make the tower for it. So you start with two of these. Slabs going up. You've seen me do this before. And there we go. Go on the other side and put a torch right here. And we know that we're going to have to save it. In other words, flash these repeaters to save the answer. So let's go ahead and make a two tick pulse generator on this guy right here. Next, our carryout bit, which tells us whether we could subtract or not, needs to be appended to what we're subtracting every time. So let's just staircase this guy down. And he's gonna meet the bottom of the red tower right here. Four tick repeater, dust, torch, and there we go. Next, let's build the circuit that's gonna send in the number that we wanna take the square root of. And it's gonna send it in two bits at a time, or a pair at a time, because all the subtraction in square root has been done at every pair. First, put a block here and a block here, put a dust here and make this guy line up with him like that. Extend these out by one, put a little bar on top of it with redstone, and then you can stack this formation seven times. Then on each line, we're gonna put a torch, a comparator on subtract mode, a lamp and a lever. Stack that seven times, put a dust in between each pair, and then for each of those, put a torch to power it and a dust on top like that. Once you've done that, connect them up and put 10 ticks of delay in between each one. I'm just gonna put four ticks, four ticks, two ticks, four, four, two, four, four, two, and then put a button with a lamp right here. Then bring this guy up by two and connect it all the way to our two tick pulse generator right here. Put two more dust right here, a dust on the corner, some dust like this, and then the rest is filled with four tick repeaters. And that should look something like this. And I almost forgot you need to fill this ROM with torches in a zigzag pattern. So go here, 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 all the way to the end. There you go. We're almost done, we have one more thing to do. It turns out that just like division, square root also creates some infinite patterns, which means that if you don't clear out this machine, it's gonna loop forever sometimes. So once the operation is done, we just need to clear it. To do that, go over to this side, Put a dust block repeater on three ticks and stack this formation seven down. Then just make a slab tower for these guys. So two blocks, slabs all the way up. At the bottom of the tower, replace this with a slab. Go down here and power this guy with a repeater and make sure to block it off right here so it doesn't interfere with any dust. Don't worry about that, that's just gonna force the multiplexer to clear what we want to clear. Then go to this side, put a repeater, out two blocks, and then all the way up until you're at the same level as the yellow, and then connect it to here. Put dust on the whole thing, 
and put a two tick repeater across from this guy going this direction. And that's gonna clear it when we're done with our operation. And with that, we're done. This is an eight bit square root extractor. Our input is down here. We have one, two, four, eight, all the way up to 128. I'm just gonna put some signs on it. This is the button to run the machine. This top bit is worth eight and then four, two, one. Right here, we have a decimal point or a radix point if you wanna speak in binary terms. And then this is one half, one fourth. We just continue to keep dividing by two and now we have two bits of accuracy in our answer. All right, I put some signs on it. Eight, four, two, one, one half, one fourth. Let's do an example. I'll do the square root of 25. So we press this button and there we go. 5.00, five with no remainder. Let's do the square root of 19. I think the answer is 4.3. And there we go. That's our four and we get one fourth. So it gave us an answer of 4.25, which is not exactly 4.3, but that's the best it can do with only two bits of accuracy. All right, awesome. Our square root extractor seems to be working. Now, while I was building it, I didn't really talk too much about how all the hardware is working. And I usually do that in my videos, but in this case, I just feel like the visuals are a lot better. So let's walk through the square root of 25 in slow motion and you'll get to see all the hardware in action. So here's 25, I'm gonna freeze the game and then I'm gonna press the run button. The first thing it does is unpowers this torch which sends in our first pair by unlocking these two comparators. In our case, it's pretty boring because our first pair is zero, zero. So let's just kinda skip through that. And now we can see it's unlocking our second pair which is interesting because our second pair is zero, one. That lines up with this right here, zero, one in the blue. So by unlocking 01, it gets transmitted through a ROM into these two lines right here. Now these two lines are 0 and 1, and these two lines directly go into the machine. Now that we have 01 into the machine, we just want to subtract 1, because that's the first thing that happens right here. And the cool thing is, it's actually already subtracting 1. If you remember, I broke the bottom block on this tower here, and all of these blocks had torches on them. Me breaking this block is the equivalent of me just flipping a lever and having that torch turn off. But that torch is always gonna be off if we're always subtracting one. So I just got rid of it. And now this is permanently subtracting one. After one cycle, it computes one minus one, which we can see is zero because none of these lines are on, but we get a carry out bit because it could do the subtraction. That's why this guy is a one. But remember, we want that one to help out with subtracting in the future. It needs to be right here for this subtraction. It needs to be right here for this subtraction. So what happens is this carry out bit comes all the way down here on this purple line and then gets plugged into this tower right here. This tower is our B input. It's what's helping us subtract, which is exactly what we want because our carry out continues to help us subtract along the way. But that orange is also our answer at the end. So that's why I'm doubling up this tower as a way to get the answer as well. And then we repeat and we send in our next pair. Our next pair is one zero, which lines up with this guy right here. So we can see that on these two green lines, it's sending in one zero into the machine. And now that our answer bit from last time, which is this guy is placed into our tower right here with this dust being on, now we're not doing two minus one, we're doing two minus five. But this is a conditional subtractor. Remember, we can't do two minus five. What is a conditional subtractor output when it gets two minus five? It just outputs A. So we have a two right here. And that's exactly equivalent to the two that comes out right here. And finally, we send in our last pair, which is zero one. This pair matches up with this guy right here. As you can see, 0, 1 is being sent into the machine. And we also have our 2 from last time, which got shifted up twice. And what happens when we combine those two things? We get a 9. 1, 0, the 2 from last time, and 0, 1, the pair we're sending in now. That's exactly what happens over here. We have 0, 1, the new pair, and the 2 from last time. So we have 9 right here. Our answer bit got shifted up. Now it's on this dust instead of this dust, which means it's going to resemble nine instead of five, which means we're essentially doing nine minus one zero zero one nine. Nine minus nine is zero. So we got nothing on the output, which is equivalent to right here, but it could do the subtraction. So we got a carry out, which is why this is a one. It comes all the way down here and gets sent in to our machine. And we can already see our answer as five. We have a dust here, 
no dust, and a dust here. 101 is a 5. All that's left to do is really just unfreeze the game and wait for it to get into its correct spot. And there we go. Our answer is 5. Whew, okay, I hope that gave you a more intuitive sense of uh, what's going on here. I tried my best, and uh, yeah, if you got any questions, you can join my Discord, ask me questions, ask other people questions. We've got a really cool Redstone community going on there. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Peace out, guys. I also want to give a huge thank you to Zoe for becoming the first Sword Tier Patreon. Thank you so much. If you like what I do and feel like supporting me, feel free to become a Patreon as well. The link is in the description. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Take care.